I've been giving tours here since 1983, and I always, always, at least once a day, have someone ask me, have you ever seen a ghost? The upstairs has the Vail bedroom, and of course that's where both Mr. and Mrs. Vail died. Again, that's not so unusual. In the 19th century, people tended to die at home. I have people on my board, on the Vail Victorian board, will not go in the basement. They just won't go to the basement. And it's interesting. It's a very interesting basement. I've never seen anything or heard anything. I have worked with people over the years that have seen things and have heard things. Originally, the Vales intended to put a ballroom and a billiards room, and then after her unfortunate death, it never got finished. And by 1930, it was a mental institution, which that kind of gives people a little frisson there, you know. Like when you're on the second floor, a lot of people think on the landing that's coming down from the third floor, they think they see a figure, and then when they look straight at it, there is nothing there. And they all say the same thing. They think they've seen a woman in a long dress. And when they turn to look at it directly, there is nothing there. This has happened down through the years that I've had people tell me that. So that kind of gives you pause to think. <laughs> When we say spirits with the spirits, it's a little bit of a play on words. We are going to have distilleries. And they'll be set up in different rooms and they will be given samples of the different things that they make. You can buy. The Vale Society, we will have people circulating with finger foods and, and all that, little snacks. And so you don't have to be a big drinker to really enjoy that aspect of it. It's just a lot of fun. A lot of people are walking around and they're all in the same kind of mood. It's like, we want a party time, and then you're looking at this house and it's dark. A lot of people think, oh, it's a little bit spooky. They will have free run of the house. We won't actually have people leading tours, but we will have a tour guide station throughout the house for questions. And then people can go upstairs, and then we will have a program on funeral customs. One thing that I find just entrancing is how the Victorians took pictures of their loved dead ones. And they wouldn't take just a picture of them lying in the coffin, they would actually sometimes prop them up in a chair. We have one photograph, it was a little boy, he was like three. So they propped him up in a large chair next to his older brother who was probably five. And the little dead boy, they painted eyeballs on his lids of his eyes. That's pretty spooky. And there were just a lot of other customs. Of course, first of all, embalming came into focus during the Civil War. A lot of times, that's why they were so important to have candles burning and have lots of flowers to mask the odor. Some of our common everyday things that we talk about, like saved by the bell, people were so afraid that they would be buried alive. A lot of people didn't die in a hospital, they died at home. So there was always this problem that, you know, maybe you weren't really dead, you were just in a coma or something. But they would actually attach a twine or a piece of strong rope to the person in the coffin. The twine or the string ran up. Up on top, there would be a little fork in the dirt and there would be a bell attached. The family would hire someone to sit there for a couple of nights in case the bell rang. Because if the bell rang, then that person was alive, so they would save them. And it's like when I heard that, I thought, oh, how funny. We say that all the time, saved by the bell, and have no idea, you know, how it got started. It was very different, the Victorian funeral customs, but I think, you know, maybe 100 years from now, people are gonna think our customs are a little different. <laughs>